everyone, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to let BuzzFeed pick what my next book is. I was looking through the book section on BuzzFeed.com and I found this quiz that is called Which New Book Should You Read Over the Long Weekend? And I was like, challenge accepted. So then I went through it and it was asking questions like what place would you like to visit? Um, the one that grabbed my attention was Ireland. I think one of the questions was like which TV fandom you liked? There were a whole bunch of options. So it was all these like fun little questions and then by the end it gave you your result. And then underneath your result, it gives you the options of all the different results that they had. And it was cool because I'd actually read a few of those. So the one that got recommended to me was one I'd never heard of before. An author that only vaguely was aware existed, but I'd never read anything of. So I was like, okay, let's see how this goes. So then I read through the description. It was like, every detail of Jules and Will's wedding on a secluded island off the coast of Ireland has been expertly planned, down to the designer dress and the luxe wedding favors. But as the festivities begin, past slights, resentments, jealousy begin to surface. Someone turns up dead. So I was like, Ireland? A wedding theme? Mystery, thriller, suspense? You have my attention. Let me check this out. So I went to Goodreads, because of course Goodreads.com is the expert for all things books, right? Saw the, the ratings and checked out how long the book was, and I'm like, I totally want to read this book. So I'm like, challenge accepted. So I decided to borrow this book from the library and thought, okay, I'll make a plan and dive into this book. So this vlog is all about my thoughts before, during, and after reading this book recommended me by BuzzFeed. And let's see if BuzzFeed can recommend me a good book. Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, just tuning in to kind of give you an update on where I'm at. So I started listening to the audiobook of the guest list today. I am about halfway through the book. And first impressions. We start off with hearing little snippets about this wedding that's occurring on an island off the coast of Ireland. And the lights go out and things are like, hmm, kind of weird, kind of spooked. The lights come back on, everyone's partying, having a good time. Lights go out a second time. It's longer, more ominous. People are starting to get freaked out. The lights do end up coming back on. One of the waitresses comes screaming and saying, oh my gosh, I saw something outside. Get little snippets of this wedding reception. And then we start sequentially describing everything that's leading up to the event of the wedding. We heard from the guests, a few of the people in the bridal party, from the bride herself, and from the wedding planner. Not totally clear on everyone's backstories yet, but we're kind of getting it piece by piece. I suspect that things that occurred in the past of some of the groomsmen is going to play a major part in figuring out the mystery component of this story. We're not really getting to where we're going yet. This is starting to pick up. I'm interested to see... <clears throat> no more snacking right before a video. Okay, back to the guest list. We're starting to pick up, kind of starting to see how things are coming all together a little bit. Now we're the morning of the wedding and we're seeing different people and what they're up to. Back and forth with preparing for the wedding and then the things that are occurring at the wedding reception. I'm interested to see once those two timelines merge. I'm anticipating that that's when the real twist or the real what moment will happen. So I'm interested to see where this goes. I have a few theories. I do find it interesting that BuzzFeed recommended me a book that is part of a genre I'm just starting to get into more, the mystery, thriller, suspense stuff. I have really pursued that genre within the young adult spectrum of books. This is more on the adult level. I'm interested to see how the second half of the book concludes. I am trying to keep it moving. I've sped it up a little bit. It did start to feel like it was dragging. So now we're in a spot where things are happening and I'm like, okay, let's let's see where this goes. So I'm hoping that from here on in for the second half of the book that we're gonna see more mind-blowing or more twisty, more interesting things happening. I will keep you guys posted. That is it for what I've read for the first day. Hopefully I can finish it tomorrow just because I kind of don't want to draw it out. I just want to see what happens and figure this book out. So I will definitely keep you guys updated. I'm gonna get ready for bed and tomorrow we'll see what reading can be done. Okay, so just checking in. I have been painting, which is why I look delightful. I've been listening to this audiobook. And I have about an hour and a half left. It's 10 hour audiobook, so now things are like 
and whew, things are fresh, which is why I'm like recording while looking like lovely. Oh my gosh, so I'm just listening and getting ready to paint and I'm like, yes, everyone is in a dysfunctional relationship, everyone has secrets, where is this going? Let's see some twisty twists. And then we're getting to a twisty twist and you're like, oh snap, because then twists happen and you're like, oh, holy moly, what is going on? So I was like, ah. <laughs> I was just like, what is happening? So then we get a twist, and it was a good twist. I did not see this coming. And um, maybe somebody else would have seen it. I did. I've read a few from this genre, and I'm finding the more I listen to from this genre, the more I read from this genre, the more easily I can like predict certain things or see kind of gaps and things. And this twist, I did not see coming. So this twist was about mm, maybe three hours from the end of the book or so. So we've since had other stuff going on, and we're starting to see more development, more secrets coming to light, and we're starting to find things out. And I'm like, mm, it's getting good. I want to see what happens. So now we're at this point where I'm like, I just I'm ready to like finish this book. So, I just say, so far, it was a little bit, mm, in the beginning, a little slow, but now I'm, like, fully, like, engrossed in this book and want to know what happens. So, that's my progress, and I will clue in with you guys. Hopefully, I can finish it in a little bit, and, uh, we'll go from there. So far, BuzzFeed, not doing too bad for recommendation. We will see how I feel at the end of this book, because I might feel differently. I might feel the same. We'll see. All right. Till then. So, I have finished my audiobook of The Guest List. Yay! And now I'm just like all cozy with a pillow here, chilling on the couch, because I want to tell you guys about my initial thoughts. There's a lot to process. I'm not really sure what I want to rate this book yet. I did appreciate that it just keeps throwing you curveball. You just keep thinking, okay, so is this person it? And then you hear something else and like, is that person the killer? And you don't know where the story's going. Up until the very end of the book, you're like, how is this going to conclude? So you really get the conclusion right at the end. You do have an epilogue, which I appreciated because I felt that was needed for the story. I'll wrap up this vlog tomorrow. Once I kind of have some time to decide what I want to rate this book. I'll be interested to see kind of how I feel about it after I've digested the story some more. But overall, I'm glad I gave this go and we'll see how I feel tomorrow. Hey everyone, so now you have seen my thoughts about this book. So I'm just going to kind of wrap things up, talk about some of the themes and some of my final thoughts on this book and whether or not I think it was worth it that I read this BuzzFeed recommendation. All right, so the themes that were involved in this were obviously about the wedding, also a lot about keeping up appearances and what other people want to see from you, make everyone around you think that you're calm and cool and collected and everything is fine, even if it's not. Kind of peeling the layers off of, okay, this is who they're pretending to be, but who are they really? So it makes for an interesting storytelling experience. It does deal with some self-harm and some mental health issues. I do like that at the end of the book, we do see a positive spin or a positive resolution to someone who has some of those self-harm tendencies. It talks about the desire to just be accepted and seen for who you are, and accepted despite your past trauma, and to know that you're not going to be rejected because of your past trauma, but to be like embraced and just like given a hug and just told you're loved and accepted by your family members. So I like that that was spoken about a little bit in the story. That wasn't a major, major theme, but that was an element of what the story was about. Now on to more of the mystery elements. We see things happening, mysterious elements going on, almost a suggestion of supernatural. They talk a lot about the graveyard and things that have happened on the island before and rumors that it's haunted on the island. So that plays into the mystery element a little bit to the story. I wish it could have been played up just a little bit more because I enjoyed that and I thought there could have been more done with it, but it's still made for an interesting storytelling experience. And then we had all the events leading up to the wedding. People arriving to the island and noticing changes and what the island does to people. Just the mood on the island. So it lends to this idea that the island is changing the people who are there the longer they're there. It's kind of like settling on their shoulders and creating this kind of ominous effect. Made for a really great storytelling experience and it definitely lent itself to 
the spooky kind of mystery element of the story. So wrapping up my final thoughts here on this book. While I didn't always love the pacing, I did feel like it lagged a bit in the beginning half of the story. I could see what the author was doing as we went along, and I could see why she was kind of laying down brick by brick the foundation for this mystery as it progressed. I did appreciate that it kept me guessing not only with who the murderer was, but who ended up being the victim. You really don't get a clear picture of that until... 75-80% of the way through the story and then you're like what? And then all these twists are starting to happen in the last 20% of the story that throw you off and I think it's not easy to predict who the victim is or who the murderer is. I have my suspicions about who the murderer was actually from pretty early on but it threw me off with so many other clues and things and little um, snippets of things meant to distract you. So it did successfully distract me and kind of make me wonder that there were so many possibilities for how this book could have turned out. It kept me interested and engaged in the story, it captured my attention very early on, and it kept my attention as I wanted to see how the book turned out. So I decided to give this book four stars. I'm really glad that BuzzFeed recommended me this book because it was not on my radar at all and I probably wouldn't have had the chance to read it if it weren't for the fact that I took this quiz. So overall this BuzzFeed recommendation was a success. Let me know in the comments if you have read any recommendations based off of internet quizzes and let's keep this conversation going. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys soon.